Welcome back to Startup Pack. All right, we've got some big news in the AI world, right, that you're not going to want to miss. Apple, who's the company who's known for, quote, it just works, right, has hit some major roadblocks with their AI initiative, shedding some light on the limitations of some of these large language models and the current industry about where it's at. So let's dive into this today, because I think this is a big, juicy spot to really show kind of the, the current state of AI. Welcome to Startup Pack. I'm Spencer Thompson here at Startup Pack. We love train software developers in our licensed coding bootcamp, as well as to uh, help companies build custom software solutions. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right. So Apple's decision to scale back Apple intelligence in the w is a wake up call. Um, that the capabilities of AI is overhyped and oversold. So after pouring massive amounts of resources into AI, they've realized that the tech simply cannot live up to the grandiose promises that it's going for, right? So we're gonna dig into a little bit of Apple's findings, examine the hard truths about the current state of AI, look at a report from some of the AI sci uh, Apple scientists and discuss what this means for the future of the field. Now, by the end, I think you're gonna have a much clearer picture of what the AI hype is about and really where we're at in the AI curve cycle. So some of the very first things is that Apple significantly scaled back its Apple intelligence projects due to major limitations with LLM. So despite heavy investments, they found that really the LLMs weren't ready. They weren't ready and they couldn't deliver on the promise capabilities that everybody's been touting to it, right? And it raised serious doubts about the viability of LLMs for other companies. So let's kind of take a look at this a little bit and see, uh, you know, what some of these reports are talking about, right? So they suspend their error strewn AI generated news alerts, right? Because they were having tons of problems and they're, they're saying they're working on improvements to make it available in the future. But really, they say innovation must never come at the expense of the right of, cit right of citizens to receive reliable information. And that's the problem is it was giving tons of false reports. Now, it was reporting things about like the killer of the United Healthcare CEO that he had shot himself and that was wrong. And there was and there was just tons of it and these hallucinations. Now, the term hallucination is really interesting because it's where an AI model makes things up, right? And so the reason that it makes it up is because AI doesn't know what to do when it doesn't know something. AI is really just designed to create a bunch of word salad, right? It's designed to take, to do pattern matching and try to make things out of those patterns. And so the problem is, is that in cases where it doesn't know, it just makes it up and plugs in other words, right? That's how AI actually works. So when it doesn't know something, it just starts to fill in the gaps. And so the problem is, is it can bring misinformation. And so in a case where this is a news feed, it was pushing a lot of really bad misinformations, right? And it prompted a further wave of criticism that the tech giant just wasn't really set up for, right? So you can see some of it example of these, right? CEO shooting suspect, <clears throat> an angry outburst outside of the court as he fights extradition, shoots himself, right? Like these are all false. None of that happened, right? So they've decided to disable the feature entirely for news and entertainment apps, right? Now with the latest beta software, it might give you some summaries and some other parts if you push to it. And they say they're looking forward to uh, building it back. But the reality of the matter is it was nowhere near ready for production, but because they were in such a rush to try to beat the AI hype, they pushed it out. And this serves as a cautionary tale about delivering AI when your product isn't ready. And this is something that everybody's looking at right now. Everybody's like, oh, we gotta get this AI out there, right? But it's not ready. So there's AI, um, when Apple was working on this, there was a groundbreaking study that exposed fundamental flaws in these large language models. Now, researchers found LLMs struggle with basic reasoning and frequently give inaccurate or inconsistent an answers. The models really truly lack contextual understanding and logical inference of abilities, right? So they rely on pattern matching and these statistical correlations leading to nonsensical outputs because it'll say, oh, well, statistically, this is close enough. And then it falls far short of a human-like intelligence, right? So let's take a look at the study here that Apple was uh, was looking at because I've got this study here pulled up. And there's a lot of this that really comes into and it goes into and explains how some of these sim symbols work and everything. But it goes into say that the prob probabilistic pattern matching um, it is, you know, uses prob probabilistic pattern matching rather than formal reasoning, right? And that's probably, although LLMs can match more abstract reasoning patterns, they fall short of true logical reasoning. And this is an official study um, by these six people. And this was peer reviewed. And these are uh, six uh, 
scientists from Apple. And they essentially, the, the reality of this and the synopsis that they come to at the end, and they go through in detail all of their experiments here, and you can read through this. I mean, this is super scientific, right? And um, But really in the very end, let me find here, the very end here, they really say that the result of this is that recently released O1 and O1 mini models have demonstrated strong performance on various reasoning and knowledge. However, they while they do rest rebut on all levels, as indicated, uh, however, it is important to note that both these experience significant performance drops, right, on GSM NOOP. We illustrate that O1 preview struggles with understanding mathematical concept natively applying 10% inflation discussion, right? So in math, this got terribly bad, but ultimately and also in its reasoning, Overall, while these exhibit strong results compared to current open source mo open models, potentially due to improved training, they still share similar limitations with the open models. So Apple, Apple scientists really came back to the fact that they weren't, that this wasn't really ready. Right. And so this is what we're really seeing across the industry right now is that there was this hype and, you know, AI's rapid growth fueled by unprecedented levels of investment. There has been I don't know if there's ever any invention that has had, had more money poured into it than AI has at this point, right? It created a massive bubble with expectations that far outpace the reality of the tech. And the big CEOs aren't helping, right? The, the CEO of NVIDIA, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, all these guys who have an invested interest in getting more money pumped into their projects are making these inflated claims like Zuckerberg saying, oh, hey, we're going to you know, replace all of our mid-level developers as early as next year with words like as early as and may and those kind of things. But the limitations are becoming more and more apparent and the bubble is starting to deflate. Industry entering The industry is totally entering a period of disillusionment, right? And I want to talk a little bit about that disillusionment because this is something that's really important to understand. Now, if your company is hitting some disillusionments because some of your projects are struggling, hit us up because here at Startup Pack, our uh, specialty is connecting systems for you. So make sure you reach out because we'd love to help out. Now, there's a hype cycle and we're really starting to heat the hit the I think we've gone past the peak of inflated expectation on the Gardner hype cycle. And let me let me show you for what that means for those who aren't familiar with the Gartner hype cycle, because this is something really important to understand in tech, because frequently we see people who um, don't fully understand all of this. And, and this is an important thing to understand because you'll get the innovation trigger, right? And we saw this run up and then we really saw this trigger hit when ChatGPT3 released in November of 2022. Make sure I got my year right. Uh, yes. And so we see this run up and then since then we've seen just a massive amount of hype, right? right, right? But we're definitely past this peak of expected inflation, right? of inflated expectations. And that's what's happened. It's like Apple released this. They said, oh my gosh, this thing's a disaster. They pulled it. Others seem to pull it. We see the amount of money going into chat, in, into open AI. And, and we're going to run toward this trough of disillusionment. And this is where people are starting to say, AI sucks. We've spent too much money on it. It's cost us too much. And that is definitely where we're at in this hype cycle, right? We're definitely at a point where we have seen um, many AI projects that are going to fizzle out. We're going to start seeing more and more of these. I don't know if we'll see funding dry up because there's still so much hype around it, but we're going to see how the, where this goes with the trough of disillusionment, right? But it's a healthy shakeout as the industry shifts from hype to more realistic grounded development cycles, right? So there is a pitfall of AI generated code and there's a dirty secret to the AI code generation, right? Because I don't know why it is that they've picked, like there's so many other things with legal and with um, creative and with so many other fields that are going to be impacted by AI long before development. But everybody's saying, oh, development, develop, developers are gonna be out. Like being a developer requires so much level of contextual understanding, which means I understand this system, I understand this system, I understand what happens when a browser rates to the server and when a request comes back into the response. Like there's so many pieces to it and you get into uh, deployments and different technologies and that contextual understanding is something that's so broad and takes so long to figure, to learn that I don't really understand why everybody's saying, oh, it's gonna replace developers. There's a lot of other careers that are gonna get hit by this before then. But even still, the secret to it right now is that um, there, the, there's still a long ways from this replacing jobs. Now, enhancing jobs and augmenting jobs, absolutely. I've been saying that for a long time. We should absolutely be using new tools with AI. It's great. 
But code may seem to work that's generated by AI, but as soon as you plug it in, the amount of hidden flaws and even backdoors is astounding and scary. Um, I wanna show you this, uh, um, this one report that I was looking at here, which shows that how many different vulnerabilities um, that you know Silicon Valley doesn't want to tell you about its AI assistance, right? So there's this uh, the technical debt has a super time bomb right to it because this cognitive crunch phenomenon is what's really hidden. And the really big impact on this that we're going to see is that we're going to see that. Let me see which are, one of these is. Um, um, is hitting this. Oh yeah. So there's a, um, sorry, I guess it wasn't in this article. I thought I had a different article. There was an article that I was reading that was talking about the number of vulnerabilities that are being published by AI. And there's a problem right now because actually a lot of people are injecting, uh, a lot of hackers are actually injecting dangerous code into the AI models and trying to train against it in hopes that more of these are going to be released. And so um, the report that I was reading said that you're 60 times more likely to have a, a major security breach if all you're using is AI generated code. Now, AI generated code is fine as long as it's reviewed by humans, deployed by humans, double, you know, tested by humans. Like there's a lot of things that have to happen, but we need to be very cautious about the code that we're using that's coming out of AI generation because it's biased in a dangerous way. It's actually introducing far more vulnerabilities than what we're seeing from humans. And so um, I'll get that report for you guys next time. I thought I had that report up here, but I uh, can't seem to find it right this second. So there is a lot of pitfalls here to this, you know, and that's one of the dirty uh, secrets, right? Is it's a much higher rate of security vulnerabilities. Now, there's a power in saying, I don't know. And one of the biggest criticisms that I have of LLMs is their inability to admit uncertainty, right? If I write a program and I do a search against database and it comes back with nothing, I get a null response, right? I get nothing. When you ask an LLM about something and it doesn't know, all it does is spout off a bunch of nonsense and false info and make up words and phrases and put them together in the way that might sound intelligence. And this is what a lot of people are calling hallucinations. There's some other parts of hallucinations as well. But this is a major flaw that undermines the trust and utility of these systems. And what I'm not really understanding is even the best systems are scoring in the 70 and 80% range. Where did five nines go, right? Like. Why is it that we've suddenly lost our mind when it comes to uh, AI and LLMs that now we're willing to throw out five nines that was normally a requirement of software development and instead be okay with something that's performing in the 60, 70% range. I have one client that's using an AI chatbot and it keeps getting a bunch of these answers wrong and it keeps coming back to me and it's an off the shelf AI product and uh, AI chatbot and it keeps saying, how can we get this better? And I'm like, this is the whole entire industry right now. So there, there's a human element, right, that's essential. And despite AI's potential, we can't lose sight of the fact that it will not replace the value of human intelligence, right? The most impactful applications will augment and empower human capabilities, but not replace them. And this is why I'm actually a big fan of AI agent concept, because it says, look, we can get AI to do this thing, do it really well, and be really smart about it and sound a lot like a human. And you can take those and you can train those to where they're very, very high percentages, closer to your to your more standard of software development. And this is where I think we really need to be focused. And, it, and I'm happy by this. We, it does look like the industry is moving towards this. But in some way, all of humanity has kind of lost their minds right now because this rapid evolution of AI really has made everybody so excited for it, but we have to be proactive and current with emergent AI technologies and techniques so we know where they're safe to be used. We can't uh, neglect fundamentals. Core skills of architecture, security, and testing as a software developer are critical, right, as an example. The other thing too is, you know, I even mentioned how I, I think, you know, AI is gonna have a huge impact on the legal, um, on the legal field, but at the same time, it still requires a human to review it because AI could spout something together that might sound okay enough, but it could miss some key terms that could legally uh, put you into a crazy spot. And that's really, really scary in a lot of ways. So as this Apple news reminds us, the AI journey is going to be filled with twists and turns. I don't think AI is going to go away. I don't think the funding is going to completely dry up, but I do think we need to get real about the expectations around AI, right? <clears throat> One of the articles that I had here was, 
<clears throat> one that says you're an absolute moron to believe in the hype of AI agents, right? And and it was really funny because it says the difference between an agent and a language model is that agents complete tasks autonomously, right? So here's an example. An agent will say, I have an algorithmic trading and financial research platform, right? And if you want to jump in and stop paying an, ex you know, an external data provider to get fundamental data, you can use this agent. It can scrape some sites, it can do this, and it does it in a very repeatable way, but it's doing the same thing over and over again repeatedly, right? And that's where an AI agent can help automate tasks, but not actually come up with ways where it's gonna be inventing things for you. So I just feel like we need to be a voice of reason and to continue to move forward quite carefully. Now, what are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I'd love to have a great discussion. Best compliment I can get is when you guys leave a comment for me. So make sure to like and subscribe and make sure to leave a comment if nothing else to say hello. Otherwise, we'll catch you guys next time. Want to become a software developer but don't want to spend four years in college and rack up massive student loan debts? Think you need technical expertise to get started? Welcome to Startup Hack, a better way to start your software career without student loans and years without income. One-on-one -on -one tutoring is included so you never get stuck and have guidance through the whole process. No technical experience is necessary. Learn at your own pace and in your own space. Startup Hack has worked with local state agencies in your area to make it so that qualifying students can get the program costs covered entirely and students can start earning while they learn. Hi, I'm Jacob and I completed the full stack development course offered by Startup Hack. One thing setting Startup Hack apart from any other coding bootcamp was the quality of one-on-one -on -one tutoring available. All of the projects that we did were challenging and thought provoking, but left me feeling very accomplished and very prepared for my first job that I was offered just days after completing the program. Hello, I'm Tom and I completed the full stack development course offered by Startup Hack. And I must say that it was an excellent experience. The tutors is what set this course apart from others. They were knowledgeable, experienced, and always available to help provide me with guidance and support. Do not hesitate to take advantage of this affordable and efficient software development course. Complete our three month coding bootcamp, gain hands on experience, and land a paid internship. With two years of experience, on average, our graduates are making over $80,000 per year. The three month program includes technologies from Microsoft, Google, and Facebook. No debt, just a quick path to earning. Check out startupack.com to code your future.